Now, we want to go broad zoom. We want to get a bigger picture. That's why we're bringing in one of the best guys and economists around. He's Peter Morisi. Peter, we love having you on the show. What's your take on what's going on in the, in the markets and the pits right now? Remember irrational exuberance? This is the reverse. I mean, everything about the economy is positive and strong, but then there's been this constant drumbeat that higher interest rates are bad for stocks. Yeah, four and a half, five percent treasury rates are bad for stocks, but three? I mean, historically, we've had much higher rates. What's more, the Fed is not withdrawing that much liquidity at all from the marketplace. Uh, it, the reality is, is that there's no good reason for this to be happening other than panic. Uh, the only thing I can really point to other than this hysteria about interest rates, which is misplaced, I mean, interest rates at 2.8% is hardly high, is this constant drumbeat from the media, including some of the print media like the Wall Street Journal, trying to find reasons why the tax cut won't work and this and that, as if, you know, a hundred years of economics has gone out the window, and it's calling into question the permanence of Donald Trump's changes. You know, he's not going to last. The Republicans yeah. are going to be out in 18 months, that sort of thing. You know, the broad, you, you always bring great perspective here. The broad zoom, you're right. We're at 2.83, 2.85 in the 10-year. I mean, it's been at 4%, 5%, much higher than where it's at now. Is the real issue here, Peter, is that the, the – and by the way, January is notoriously, historically a rocky me, uh, month for stocks. Is it that we, we are basically – the issue is this, that the real crisis is in how we govern ourselves. Because we have that two-year Senate budget deal heading to the House, and now the Democrats may you know, vote that down. So we're on this sort of rolling crisis in Washington, D.C., when it comes to the fiscal purse and always threatening government shutdowns now every other month, it seems. I don't think the shutdown is much of an issue because what we've seen is when the government shut down, right, that's not, not an much issue, shut but, down. But I'm talking about the government spending that's going on. Oh, that's different. I mean, there is some concern that the government has gotten out of control with regard to spending. I mean, Republicans really didn't deliver a very large personal tax cut. They didn't do some of the things that we thought they would do. Uh, and, uh, and now they can't seem to control spending. And I think this lends credence to the idea that, you know, this conservative majority is not an enduring situation, that these changes we're seeing in economic policy are not big enough and they're not going, going to last. And I, and, I, and I think part of that is this, you know, constant opposition and negativism. I mean, Donald Trump could discover a way to change lead into gold, and Nancy Pelosi <laughs> would then accuse him of sorcery <laughs> and corrupting the morals of the nation. I, I have mean, to that, quote that, you on that. That's hilarious. I mean, that's, I mean you know, the, the princess of darkness would find some kind of problem in it. Uh, you know, you give, out, give someone a $2,000 bonus that only makes $30,000 a year. It should have been 3000 But my feeling is that uh, this constant drumbeat about interest rates and inflation, heck, interest, t inflation is tame. Uh, it, t the numbers show it. The, 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 the Fed numbers are less than 2%. Yeah, but, 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 Peter, the issue is, is that we're going into a debt bomb with a, a trillion-dollar budget deficit now and that the government debt pile is a lot bigger than it was before the financial crisis. And if interest rates, you know, the speed, the rapidity of it is what is spooking uh, the markets now, the, the, how fast that yield has been moving higher. Go ahead. Well, the thing is, is that the yields went down even as the Fed was tightening last year. So now the reverse is happening, but it's an accelerated pace. We're getting two years of Treasury bill increases in one. But uh, the, the thing about... Uh, uh, the Fed printing, say, too much money in the future because of the debt. I mean, that's the implication. Right. If the financial crisis taught us anything, the government printing a lot of money isn't going to cause inflation because it was printing a lot of money well through the decade while the economy was recovering and we weren't getting a lot of inflation. It seems as though they're printing a lot of money just doesn't create inflation anymore. And there's a lot of reasons so what does? for that. So what does? Well, well, we were trying to find out what does. I okay. mean, the Fed has tried every conceivable mechanism <laughs> to try to get inflation. Right. And, you know, guess what? I don't think we need it. If the economy can grow 3% last year with inflation less than 2%, you know, the last three quarters, mm -hmm. maybe we don't need inflation at 2%. Oh. Maybe they're worshiping a false god. Interesting. Peter, you're always terrific. Professor Peter Reese is brilliant. We love having you on. Come back soon.